okay we're recording so this is the follow-up video to the e3050 week 4 lecture 1 I couldn't record in class because of technical difficulties so I'm going to just add these uh, voiceover if you will to the notes so this video is actually gonna be very short since I'm not writing as I'm talking okay today what we're gonna cover is we're gonna cover section 2.7 from the book which is transfer functions for systems with gears so basically gears allow us to match load with the drive system the electrical equivalent as Scott correctly mentioned is a transformer so consider this picture from your book uh, that is you have basically two gears that are attached to each other down here and we're gonna assume that the gears are lossless so there is no uh, moment of inertia or torsional uh, like friction associated with these gears we'll see how to add that in later so the schematic which you should um, obviously like remember uh, like learn to draw because it's very inconvenient to keep drawing these gears over uh, and over is given by here so notice that as you apply torque in the clockwise direction here the rotation here is counterclockwise and that's what's indicated in the picture as well n1 and n2 are the number of teeth on the gear which are obviously proportional to the radii now the first concept is as gears rotate the distance traveled along the circumference of the both gears is the same now something important i figured out after i went back home which is what i'm recording this is that this is the distance it's not the displacement in the sense if you look at it if you look at the displacement obviously in terms of uh, using including direction the direction of rotation for this guy is obviously opposite for, to the direction of rotation of this guy and that's not conveyed in this equation that's fine for now as we will see actually uh, in tomorrow's lecture if you're going to draw a free body diagram for this system then it will become important okay but anyway for now l1 equals l2 so r1 theta 1 equals r2 theta 2 uh, so in other words r1 over r2 equals theta 2 over theta 1 but the radii are proportional to the number of teeth so this is the first equation you gotta remember by understanding the concept uh, i don't recommend you blindly know it's not i don't recommend don't blindly re memorize these equations it's very easy to derive this from first principles so that's the first concept the second concept is since we assumed lossless gears the conservation of rotational energy implies that the energy here which is the torque times the angular displacement is equivalent to remember like um, energy if we in translation motion is force times distance the rotational equivalent of force is torque the rotational equivalent of linear displacement is angular displacement so tau 1 theta 1 equals tau 2 theta 2 in other words tau capital tau 1 over tau 2 equals theta 2 over theta 1 and you can combine with equation 1 to give you this relationship these are the two most important relationships for systems with gears and note that in 2 if n1 is smaller than n2 then the output torque is or sorry if, assuming t2 is the output shaft this is the larger gear so obviously the output torque is greater than the input torque so all of these should be, as we talk about this, you should go back to physical gears that you have played with when you were younger with Legos or even gear systems in cars and visualize what's going on. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do an example so we understand this. So consider the system below. So you have input torque displacement in the clockwise direction. So this is the input shaft. Then on this guy, you have displacement in the opposite direction. Here's the output shaft. So we're going to set up simply the system of equations describing the system without drawing a free body diagram we'll do that um, next lecture so at theta 2 the output shaft you have j theta 2 double dot plus d theta 2 dot plus k theta 2 which are the impedances that oppose this torque t2 and this is actually in the uh, in tau 2 this is actually in the time domain and we know that this is the relationship between torque in torque tau in tau 2 n1 n2 and theta 2 theta 1 so using 2 and 1 we can determine the transfer function we want notice in the margin here 
I derived equation 2 okay so let's substitute 2 but first let's substitute 2 and 1 and eliminate theta 2 and tau 2 in other words let's get everything in terms of theta 1 so let's see theta 2 double dot I mean these are just constants so you just multiply by um, n1 over n2 over here n1 over n2 here n1 over n2 here and the torque you multiply by n2 over n1 so finally what we get in terms of the input shaft is you get the impedance on the output shaft times this ratio squared where do you get the squared we'll just be careful with the math same thing here and same thing here so in other words the equivalent picture for equation 3 is basically these impedances here being reflected back on the input shaft so you can see that you're getting the impedance times the number of teeth on the destination shaft divided by the number of teeth on the source shaft squared and likewise for these impedances so equation 3 and the appropriate figure is the result of reflecting impedances from the um, well the source shaft yeah this is the source shaft or the destination shaft that's correct so this is the output shaft and that's the input shaft that's where I hesitated a little bit I got confused between source and output anyway so you are reflecting from the source shaft to the destination shaft so the equivalent impedance notation is Z number of teeth on the destination shaft which is n1 over number of teeth on the source shaft whole squared okay like I promised this was a very short video so tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to do a skill assessment exercise so tomorrow we're going to do skill assessment exercise 210 on page 78 and we're actually going to do this by like three ways right and I'll get to this tomorrow it's very important that you basically understand the free body diagram of what's going on here the concept you don't have to do this the free body diagram way but it's very important you understand what's going on all right so see you tomorrow